Um, so I think now we will move west to Canada and uh, North America. So we'll have a short presentation about Canada and the United States, which will combine into our North American presentation. And uh, the final presentation will be um, Africa. And I'd like to save some time at the end. I know we're running a little bit late, but I'd like to save some time at the end to talk about um, the international accord that we uh, endorsed yesterday in one of our meetings. So now I know it's a good Canadian. So I'd like to introduce uh, Martha Whitehead, who is the um, current president of the Canadian Association of Research Libraries and also the, um, the dean of libraries at Queen's, vice provost. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. So it's always really wonderful and interesting to hear about all the developments in other regions and also a bit intimidating because I think um, we are not as advanced in uh, North America, but um, I hope that this is a useful presentation in the sense that it uh, sort of steps back and thinks about why we're even having these conversations. So, Canadian context. Um, the Canadian Association of Research Libraries recently released this uh, Carl Scholarly Communications Roadmap. And the words here are important because it's guided by a vision of an open, sustainable, effective, and innovative scholarly communication system that's governed and managed by the scholarly community. So, the sense of bringing back, repatriating that scholarship, and reflects a substantial role for Canadian academic libraries. So we were pretty deliberate in thinking about this, and I think it does set the context for what we're trying to do in the repositories landscape. But I wanted to step back a little bit further and, and talk about an initiative that we took um, in 2016. We published this paper called Canadian Universities and Sustainable Publishing. And it was really just a reflection on this moment in time that we're at that feels ideal for moving forward with new forms of scholarly communications. And there's all of these things that are coming together in terms of growing expertise of academic libraries, um, technology initiatives, our policies. We now have policies in Canada around open access, and this oligopoly of international academic publishers. So we haven't mentioned that yet this morning. Um, but I wanted to, oops, there's a slide missing. Oh, darn. Um, here's a slide that, that should show something that I uh, use as a presentation point at our own university that always impresses people. And it's just that slide about costs of um, the five big publishers and what a huge percentage of our acquisitions budget that is taking up. What surprised me about that slide, I'm sure you all have similar ones, but what surprised me was how it was still surprising to our researchers. And it seemed to be a point of engagement that we've been using for many years, but something seems to have changed where there's sort of more of an awareness, more of an interest, and more of an interest in, well, if we have this problem, what are we trying to do about it? So we uh, presented to groups like um, the uh, provosts on our largest 15 universities that's led to a statement of principles, we hope, um, that will be coming out soon. And then institutionally, we had a variety of us were just giving the same kinds of presentations at institutions and raising awareness. And that led to encouragement that we just do this roadmap. So the idea of the roadmap is really that acting nationally and coordinating internationally and working with groups like CORE, that we can be a force for change. So we want to collaborate with other stakeholders in Canada. That's really important in our landscape, thinking about um, the, the number of relationships we have with high-speed network, high-performance computing, granting councils. So we do a lot of outreach and networking. We want to identify and support and promote ideas with other regions, so see how we can all work together. Um, and a big part of this is just working to change cultures. So thinking about um, what is driving the, the current scholarly communication system. And then we want to think about the pilot projects that can make a difference. So what can we start that's small and can uh, possibly expand beyond our borders? Okay, this is a whole presentation. Okay, so <laughs> the roadmap includes five points. And it includes a variety of um, things like, like developing culture, um, how we're going to push back in terms of the big deal. But I'm going to just talk about the ones that relate to uh, repositories and to research data management. So uh, this, this one, 3.4, strengthen and add value to the network of Canadian open access repositories by collaborating more closely and adopting a broader range of services such as assessment and usage measures. So really thinking of the next generation repositories, we have a number of very strong um, repositories in universities across the country, but I would say we don't yet have that sense of a strong network like we're seeing from other regions. 
So our objectives are to increase, oh, this is, here we go, here's the five objectives. So increase awareness and engage stakeholders about the benefits of open access, so very high level. Uh, promote and accelerate the adoption of open science policies. We have just a few universities that have our own uh, local policies. We'd like to promote that more. Uh, lower the economic barriers, so that's code for pushback on the big deals and uh, look at um, other, other approaches to, those, uh, to acquiring those materials. And um, promote the responsible application of impact and productivity measures. So we're working with a variety of groups like the, well, my example in Ontario is um, a group that is looking at the research metrics that are used to establish funding for our institutions. So how do we change those models? And expanding types of research outputs that contribute to the formal scholarly communication system. So all the things that we're just hearing about in the open air, it's about not just publications, but data and code. So, uh, in terms of the repositories, uh, we had a great session that we organized with CORE, uh, Where Next for Repositories, and we were really trying to strengthen the role of the momentum of this idea of a Canadian repositories network. We wanted to inform the community about the international initiatives, so Kathleen was one of our speakers, of course. Um, and just to discuss what we see as new and evolving roles for those repositories, and basically set the agenda for moving forward. So the key um, outcome was just in terms of this vision, the idea that we're moving from you know, the idea of our institutional repositories to be known within this national and international, potentially global uh, knowledge models, and with contents that are more than uh, just the publications, which is really what we're seeing in a lot of those institutional repositories. Uh, we decided that there's two major areas that we want to develop. One is improving the functionality of repositories with that idea of interoperability and connectedness, and supporting the development of value-added services, so things like we're seeing coming out of the core next generation repositories work. So specific actions, uh, we want to develop standards for repositories usage data, uh, coordinate the uptake of interoperability standards, identify best practices in collection development, look to develop a national aggregator, and that, and that. Um, develop and strengthen our community of practice, and develop strategies to demonstrate repositories value. I'm sure you're all very familiar with these things. So, um, in terms of looking to, to develop a national aggregator, ideally we do want to be working internationally. We've put in a proposal for um, to the, an open air advance proposal to pilot the aggregator as a service uh, with Canadian repositories. So that's aggregating records from our repositories, uh, enhancing those records as we've heard is possible using automated curation technologies, um, and then provide centralized search of those records and integrate those into the broader open air aggregation. So the roadmap also includes um, a statement about research data management, and I'm going to give a presentation tomorrow afternoon about Portage, but just wanted to mention it briefly. So Portage is a really a grassroots uh, development of a research data management network in Canada that is um, really based in libraries, and the idea that we wanted to leverage things that we were already seeing happen in our library environment. And it has the, the two elements that uh, we were just hearing about, about the human network and the infrastructure as well. So we have a vision for a federated research data service that has um, uh, this idea of repositories, a preservation pipeline, discovery engine, and support, the human network. And there's, there's two aspects of this project right now. One is um, to build this idea of a very federated repository approach, but also for people who don't have a repository for data, the idea of operating a new research data repository that can handle large data files and large data sets. So that is this project, the Federated uh, Research Data Repository. So this is a partnership of Portage, the Research Data Management Network I mentioned, and Compute Canada, which are, is our high performance computing group. And there's been this development of a scalable uh, software framework. This does use Globus Connect, Glo Globus Publication, and Archive Matica as the back end um, developing the archival uh, structure. So we've had a project going since uh, January 2016. Um, we are now into an alpha phase um, prototyping interface and software for beta and hoping to have the production system up and running next January. And you can see more about it there. So one of the big things we have to emphasize in our home is that this isn't a monolithic solution. We're not building one big uh, data service. Really it is the idea of a framework and um, that's really building out what we currently have but also making it interoperable. So the idea of a very federated, coherent system. So there's the Portage website, portagenetwork.ca. You can find lots more information. We have a nice update uh, of the uh, last couple of months of developments and further information. So 
summary, I just wanted to say that we are working towards a lot of what we've all been talking about in other regions, but the idea, I think, essentially for us is to build that national cohesion. So the idea of having a very strategic framework, which I should say with the roadmap, we didn't feel that those five elements were anything earth-shattering. The important thing was just that we put it down on paper, that we work very coherently, and that we'd be able to address that feedback that we always hear when people like me give those presentations to our faculty, that, yeah, but it's so complicated. Yeah, but I have to publish in this journal. So we're just trying to say, yeah, but we can go through this systematically and work towards change. So national cohesion and international integration to get to that uh, global knowledge conference that we all want.